Hey, this is Tony Ross for the 2D Animation Virtual Summit, and I am hanging out with my good friend, uh, mentor. Uh, he hates that I call him a living legend. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think one year you referred to yourself as the old wrinkly in the corner, but we <laughs> refer to you as the new old man of animation, Mr. Tony White, sir. Okay, I'll buy, I'll buy that one. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> How's it going, man? All right. Busy, 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 busy. Um, not not paid for busy, but busy. Um, I've, I've got to a stage in my life, obviously, where I can pick and choose. Not financially. I'm not financially free enough to do that, really. But I do, because if I've got time, um, I'm so passionate about what I do. It's it's like my vacation, too, you know. So, um, so I always find work for myself. I'm, I guess I'm a confirmed workaholic, but it's always for good things, I think. Definitely. Uh, so... In a nutshell, for those of you who don't know, I almost want to make you go Google it, but <laughs> Tony White Animator, uh, who who exactly are you, sir? Okay. Well, I probably should Google it myself because who knows what people were saying about me out there. You know, <laughs> it probably is a good exercise to do that. But in a nutshell, I am a veteran, 50-odd years of doing animation, traditional hand-drawn animation. I'm passionate about it. I've tried 3D, I've tried digital rigged characters. Um, it's all interesting to me, but it's not so organic. So I'm an artist and what I call an artist animator. I like to draw everything I do. And then I'll, of course, take it into the computer and everything. But I've been around for 50 years, for better or worse. I studied, indeed, I was the apprentice of Richard Williams when I first started my career in anima on the animation side. I was his apprentice for 18 months, and then I director animator for him in London for another five years. Then I set up my own studio for 20 years. We won lots of awards. I've done over 200 TV commercials, two TV specials, several short films. And way, way back when I was actually a young man, I did the. I was totally responsible for the title sequence of The Pink Panther Strikes Again. And in 98, I closed down my studio in London, even though we'd won awards and done all that, I could never get funding for movies, which is what I really wanted to do. I wanted to make my own movies. So I basically got on the plane and came to America and uh, sat it out here for two and a half years, wrote a book while I was doing it. And uh, at the end of that period, I started talking to investors who were very interested in my movie ideas and everything. It was going very, very nicely until in 2002, Michael Eisner, in his infinite wisdom, closed down the hand-drawn 2D animation studio at Disney, uh, shamefully, and uh, basically everything died overnight. Everything in 2D died overnight. And uh, so I was stranded here, and I had no plan B. Uh, but Plan B ended up me teaching and then working in my spare time on my own projects, still with the, the still with the belief that one day I will make that movie that I want to make. So in a nutshell, that's me. Loving it. And, and, and wrote some books along the way. I should have said just a, just a few books, yes. Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's it's uh that was my first one of my first introductions to you is checking out uh from the library, the animator's workbook, checking it out enough times and then finally owning it. And I remember years ago, I don't even know if you remember this, but I was uh, at the time I was teaching Flash and I was doing the thing of reaching out and saying, Okay, well, what questions, you know. If I said, I'm about to build up this new course, what kind of questions would you have? And so people were chiming in and leaving their email addresses. And I saw your email address and I was like, why do I know that name? And then I saw the, your, the, the illustration next to your name. I was like, okay, I know that illustration. And I saw you Google it and I'm looking up like, no way. So yeah, it was <laughs> kind of a, I, and, and is to talk up Mark Simon always, get, always makes fun of me. I am like un unashamedly a what is that fanboy when it comes to a lot of people I have on the summit. You are definitely one of those people. So I have to try to talk to you and not gush at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Always a privilege and an honor to get to chat with you. Uh, so one, thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so I'm going to hit you up with a couple of questions. And then I also want to talk about uh, the ongoing project that I'm working on with you. Uh, mm -hmm. But before we get there, uh, I wanted to run a question by you. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. your opinion, what is the biggest misconception um, that it comes to uh, that? It's, what's the biggest misconception you think it is uh, for people when it comes to 2D animation? The misconception, well, the modern misconception, um, I would absolutely say is that if you understand software, you're a 2D animator, and it's not at all true. Um, software is a tool, but like a pencil, it's a tool, you know, and it's what you bring into it that makes it special. It's not the tool you use. So it doesn't matter what tool you use, but the the, the real truth of 2D animation is the truth that was taught to me by our elders, our amazing elders from the industry way, way back, um, that you've got to understand the core principles of movement. And it doesn't matter if you draw them or you rig them and move them or you 3D, you know, uh, animate them. If you don't have those core principles of movement in your mind, in your in, in your experience, and you're able to reproduce them, whatever animation you do, it's not going to be very good. And the, the the modern misconception, and it's it's made popular by the manufacturers, of course, it's implied, it's not said outright, but, oh, if you have this software, you can animate anything. And, and it's not at all true. You, it, it, you, can, you can make things move, absolutely. And some people are natural and gifted at movement and are natural and gifted at design and they come up with incredible images and they make a move and a lot of it is passed for animation i i cringe when i watch tv or i cringe when i go on to instagram or facebook or you know i rarely go on tiktok anymore but any of those and i look at what they call animation and i can see that there's a technical expertise to it but there's nothing really beneath the surface in terms of movement, personality, emotion, anything like that. And I find it particularly frustrating when I see movies, indie, indie movies. I don't watch mainstream anymore. I can't stand the Hollywood approach to filmmaking but anymore. Um, but when I see a good indie movie, and I really love it, and I really think the design, the story, and everything is great, and then I see how things move, and I think, if only, if only you could have done, just change that key just a little bit like that, the next key just a little bit like, and that whole movement would be absolutely aced, you know. So I've gone on a tangent a bit, but really, yeah, I think the, the, the whole thing is based on the modern myth that, yeah, if you learn the software, you can be an animator. And yes, you can be an animator, but you've got to have a lot more credentials that you bring to the software before you become, you know, that master animator, if you like. You know, th these days, there's not much discrimination at the lower end of the industry on how well things move. Just get it moving. I don't care if it's moving. It we'll get it out there, you know, whether it's TV or video games or whatever. It, it it's, it's a pity. and. Um, and I once said to a leading games person who I respected a lot, and I respect people in games and, and all that, I said, who are your nine old men of animation in, in games industry? Who are they? And they said, we don't have anything like that. You know, we, I don't know. I said, well, who's your number one animator? Who, who would you hire number one? I don't know, because we just get it done. You know, in games, wow. as long as it moves, it's okay. And I kind of lost interest at that point, not in the person. I never lose interest in people, <clears throat> but in that philosophy that, oh, yeah, we just make it move and it's OK. And and from my perspective, coming from some legends who taught me, uh, it's really not OK. But I understand the modern pressures of, of, of time, money, bosses, you know, employers, suits, um, they put enormous pressures on people so people have to do it fast and shit but if you're ever working on your own you really need to put more into it than just operate software is that a long wrong answer or right answer? no, I, no. Don't I i i heavily agree with you and the 
what I think about, and I'm slightly, I'm not even slightly, I am guilty of this. I was talking about, um, I have several colleagues of mine that are putting out their own thing and they're like, I'm going to do this thing. I said, yes. And that might take a while. And I'm like, I'm trying to grab funding for it. I'm trying to do this. And I will say, meanwhile, there's this person or this this particular uh, group that's doing little stick figures, pretty much. They're not even moving that much, but their audience is huge. Yeah. So I normally yeah. going, do something, get it out there quick. <laughs> so, so get an audience, get a following and um, get that to that end. I will say what was interesting for me, um, and I'm going to I'm going to say I don't normally call out show names, especially when I'm talking to you, um, especially when I'm talking to you, but it's because I'm going to I might say a name and you're like, oh, that's rubbish. But anyway, hear me out. Um, I was watching one of my favorite shows to watch was uh, uh, Peppa Pig. Uh, mm -hmm. The little show, and what I loved about it, it was there was really stupid basic shapes. But I'm watching, and from it wasn't they weren't just swapping out mouths. So like you're looking, there's a nice squash and stretch going on with, when they're talking, and there's a little, little, just little subtle things that they were doing with the characters. I'm going like, they actually put some time into this. This is kind, this is kind of cool because they could <laughs> easily cheat it and said cheated it and said, oh, it's for a kids show. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm watching it going, I, I, I see what you did there. That's That was kind of cool. But there's like these nice little things occasionally. I think my pet peeve, though, is still that um, when people don't play, uh, just kind of when they ignore a lot of stuff, which is one of the reasons why I, I, when people go like, Tony, you're an animator, right? And it's like, I am a trainer or a hack. I, I know how to animate, but I don't consider myself an animator. It's like, if you ask me, uh, if you said, Tony, I'll give you a thousand dollars right now, if you can name um, the 12 principles, I'm like, give me a second. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so here's my other question for you. Uh, can I just jump in there, by the way? Uh, you mentioned Peppa Pig. I didn't know you were going to mention Peppa Pig. One of the co-creators is a guy called Neville. He actually worked for me when I had my studio in London. He trained as an assistant there. So if there's any merit in the animation that you're saying, I had a little part in that, you know, but not a lot. I mean, because Holy his whole journey is his <laughs> journey. and it, But but he worked for quite a while with me um, as an assistant on commercials. And so, and we try, and I tried to train everyone. Uh, at one point, I closed my studio down when we were working on a production, a bigger production. I closed it down every Friday and did master classes, and they did homework and everything. So everyone had a chance to learn animation and the animation principles. And then they all went their own separate ways. And I'm sure Neville's like 10 times richer than I am right now with the success of Peppa Pig. And I'm still talking about doing animation, you know. <laughs> so, but anyway. Second question. Second question. <laughs> and one, and that, that was cool and did not know. We have to talk more about that. Uh, yeah. My second question, what genre in 2D animation do we need to see a lot more of? Um, I, I'm totally biased, but hand-drawn animation, but it's unlikely to happen. And and I tell you what, and there's certain so, – uh, I should I should clarify that. It's, uh, it's not going to happen in the U.S., Let's put it like that, yeah. because there's no encouragement for it to happen in the U.S. In fact, 2D is not anymore the domain of the U.S. It, it it really is the rest of the world doing interesting and exciting things. And the rest of the world still has a kind of tradition of hand-drawn. And if you go to places like Japan, obviously with Miyazaki and everything, it's totally, um, there's totally a career path there if you want it. But in the U.S., not. But I, yeah, I'd like to see. But hand drawn. Uh, there's a myth about hand drawn that's put out by modern studios. Let's say big studios in Burbank, California. The hand drawn animation is way too expensive uh, to make anymore, and that's absolutely a fallacy. Absolutely, I could make a really well made, well made, two D hand drawn animated film for say fifteen million dollars. Really, I could do that. And it would be good quality, not the best, not not Disney in the golden era, but a really good quality animated feature film. 
for $15 million. And I'd had people who would appreciate working on it because they want to do the same thing as I do. And that's in a context of a world where we talk about $100 million, $200 million for an animated movie. Tell me where it's more expensive. Tell me where that is. And tell me where it's better to go totally 3D and never do a 2D um, because 2D has certain qualities that none of the others have. Bottom line with animated movies anyway, it's all the story. And it, regardless of how you make that story work in animation, the story is all important. But if it's the story is suitable for hand-drawn animation, I really think we need to give that a chance. The Europeans do it. Uh, Asia does it. So even there's degree of it in Australia, um, India for for sure. Why not the USA? The USA led the world way back in hand drawn two D animation. Nobody was even close, and now it's not even in the game anymore. So ask me why that is. And when they tell you, oh, it's too expensive, they're wrong. They're totally wrong. Okay, that is it's. I definitely think I've noticed this, especially with, um, as you said, with all the different uh, other countries popping up. I keep seeing when something big keeps popping up because I think um, America loves to, I think our number one export is uh, marketing or the spin we put on things. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I yeah, keep waiting very for- Very good at that. Number one in the world at that. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, I keep waiting for this one movie that someone else puts out and I keep waiting for America to go, oh, wait, we can actually do that too. Let's do that. Um, I was true. hoping that was going to happen with Klaus. It did not. Yeah. yeah. Um, Amazing. Yeah. It was, it was like, man, I was like, surely someone. Um, I had a question. Did you ever see, and I, I don't know if we talked about this before. Uh, did you ever see the animation? Uh, it was it was done for a game, but the uh, the game Cuphead. Yeah, yeah. That they was... reproduced that old Fleischer animation beautifully. I mean, it, in the context okay. of the modern world and economics of the modern world and time pressures of the modern world, I think they did a great job with that. And it was refreshing. Wasn't it refreshing just to see something like that? I'm not a game player. I have to confess that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the game plays like. But just looking at it, it's so refreshing. And I thought that has got something that a thousand other games doesn't have just to look at it. You right. know, I know Michelle Garnet did did one as well. I can't remember the name of it now, but and uh, and apparently the gameplay is almost impossible to do, but it looks stunning. It absolutely is, you know, and um, it's possible. One thing that was interesting about Cuphead, and because I saw when they, I knew, I remember saw when they first started working on it, and they actually were doing uh, the whole. Uh, and they were whole, do, doing the whole um, hand drawn on paper and then mm. scanning it in. Yeah. I was like, man, this looks gorgeous. And then when Netflix said, oh, by the way, we're going to do a Cuphead series. And I was like, how? Because oh? <laughs> I'm going like, I was like, how many corners are you going to cut? Do I even want to look at what's going to happen? Right. right. Um, because I'm thinking like, there's no way you're going to pull it off. Yeah. It's not bad. I've watched I've watched an episode or two. It's not bad, but it's also not what the game was. Yeah. So, but yeah, and the the um I don't know if you've ever if you ever want to Google this and this anyone listening Google's this. If you look up Cuphead boss fights on YouTube and you'll see just the crazy surreal nature that was that time period in that genre mm -hmm. of what is it? Almost everything on looking like it's on ones and some of the, I think some of it, I think it is on ones. So it's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. It's a pity somebody up there and I don't know these people with money and power and influence looked at that and said, I want to see that as a movie and I want to see it as a really good movie as it would have been made back then. You know, right. I wish somebody who liked that existed, but they don't. And, and so what they do is what you say is they, they take a franchise and just, screw with it so much that they cheapen it not make it nasty cheap and nasty get it out there let's hit the deadline let's take advantage of this one year window of opportunity to cash in on it and then we'll dump it well after, after we've trashed the legend of it 
we'll dump it and move on and find out the next thing. And that's very true what goes on these days. It's very frustrating. Whereas Walt Disney, and I, I it, sorry, I get onto my pet arguments here. Walt Disney, whatever you think of the man, his history and everything, the truth of the man, he was a genius. And he was a genius and he was a business genius. He wasn't a businessman. His brother did all that. But he was a business genius because what he did the man went all in when he made Snow White. He got to the point where he said, I'm not just getting this film finished. I want this to be a great film that will last for generations because that's where we're going to make our money. Generations are still going to want to watch this film long after the deadline of opportunity of getting a movie out, dist distribute it, get the money, move on. He never. He had 180 degrees to that. He said, "No, we're not making this movie for the next distribution roundup. You know, uh, we're making this for generations in the future, and that's where our money, that's where our reputation, that's where we build the legend." And Roy would pull his hair out and said, "But we can't afford that." And and Walt would throw stuff out and redo it and throw it until he was happy it was right. And they mortgaged their houses, they sold their cars, they did everything to get that. And so, and when Snow White was uh, premiered in Hollywood, everyone came to laugh. It, if you check it out, everyone came to laugh because they all said in, the, in that era, it was all short films. It was just short filler films to go in with the main feature films, right. not animated features, but regular features, just entertainment throwaways. And Walt said, I'm going to make an animated movie. And they said, you can't do it. You cannot hold an audience for 80 minutes with drawings moving you just can't do it and walt said yeah and he did it and he blew them away and apparently when the lights went up they all came to laugh at him and dance on his grave when the lights came up there was all these moguls with cigars in their mouths and everything with tears in their eyes they were totally blown away by what he created and that's because he went against the stream and that's why i said i wish klaus was a perfect example of somebody doing something quality and different and moving forward and where's the support for that? Where's their second film? Nothing to do with them. It's to do with the industry not supporting that. There's no one executive suit up there that says, that's amazing. I'm going to take that all the way it can go. And they're not doing it. And what they're doing, they're boring blockbusters. One in 10 make money, and the rest of them are just the same old, same old. Anyway, soapbox over. I'll... Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can go on another tangent with another question. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, sir. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about the project you're working on. And um, you, I was blessed that you're working on. We're yeah, working on. We're working on that. You asked me to, to be a part of that. And thank yep. you. Um, can you tell us about Drawtastic and what is Drawtastic? Okay, so yeah, I'm mean, very excited by this one because I, um, people who know me know that I've written lots of books and I do class online classes and all this stuff, and um, and my my latest book, Animation Masterclass, it came out pretty recently, and it's been well received. But and it's 800 pages thick. It was like I thought, how can I pour my five my 50 years of experience of knowledge and and teaching ability, you know, whatever techniques how can i put it all in one book as my legacy that's it there's my book and i did it it's about 800 pages but what i realized very soon after it came out was not that it was bad there was nothing i don't think there's anything bad in it it's really uh, it it does what i had set to achieve but it doesn't communicate to younger generations in the way they're used to communicating so i thought oh, okay so what it needs is a 2D, um, I'm mainly focused on 2D animation, but trust me, what I teach in 2D applies to all forms of animation because it's about movement. It's not software technology. It's about movement. And wouldn't it be good to take all that stuff I put in my books and put everything I've done and put it into one phone app? And people could just tap on their phones and say, oh, I want to learn how to do a whole series. How do, we, how do you do a sneak? And you can go on the app and you can find a course on there that teaches you about sneaks. Um, how how do you put a film together? There's a production course or a pre-production course. There's all kinds of things, resources on there. At the same time, because I tend to, in my own non-marketing way, because I'm not an American marketer, I'm an English, quiet, sitting in the background kind of guy, 
uh, just like drawing, um, I run my own animation festival called the Drawtastic Animation Festival. And every year we give golden pencil awards to the best category winners, mainly 2D, but not exclusively. And I thought, wouldn't that be great if we had our festival on the app as well? And what about I, I and a number of my contemporaries are rapidly dying off now. I don't want to go yet, but we're rapidly dying off. The reality is, and we hold knowledge, experience and everything of 2D animation, especially cell animation, but 2D animation as it was done before the technology uh, overwhelmed it all. Wouldn't it be great to have interviews with people like that? And hear them talking about the old days and showing the techniques of the old days and just hearing their thoughts and everything. Wouldn't it be great to have that? So I see this app, Drawtastic is the app, Drawtastic with an exclamation mark on the end. There's a beta version available in the Apple Store right now. And there is any day, I keep saying this and they keep letting me down. Any day it's going to be on Google Play as well. I'm just waiting for clear. It's in review and it's been in review for, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, soon you'll have a beta version of the app, which is just the really bare bones of what I see it as. But ultimately, I see Drawtastic as a digital university, museum, and screening room for everything 2D animation, especially the core principles. Not so much, it's using technology. Uh, it's, it's, let's put it like this, it's, it's providing information, knowledge, experience, techniques, principles, and everything that people can take in any direction they wanna go. And it's basically prepare, it's gonna be preparing the animators of today and tomorrow when new technology evolves with all the information they need to carry into that technology. It's really going back to what we were saying at the beginning. It's what you bring to the computer, what you bring to the technology, which separates you from the rest, you know? And, and so the app is all about giving you everything that separates you from the, the rest. And then you can take it in any direction, like in any technology and any technique of animation you like. So that's what Drawtastic is about. So we've set up, as you know, um, uh, we set up a um, Indigo in, Indiegogo campaign called Drawtastic with an exclamation mark at the end, and we're trying to raise funds for me to broaden out the beta version. The beta version, as far as I can take it right now, and I need a lot of help, and I need a lot of time, and I need to survive to to bring new courses into it. There, there's we're also appealing for sponsors that might want to sponsor just a whole course. And we can create the course around that, put it in the app, and they can have their brand or name all the way through. Or if you're just a supporter of what I'm trying to do or what what is needed right now with the almost demise of traditional 2D animation, almost, um, if you want to support keeping that going, providing the animators of today and tomorrow with the skills, the techniques, and the knowledge of doing that in the future, uh, then please support it on Indiegogo because that's how I can build it. I, I, I just can't build it on my, I've only got so much time and as I get older, my eyes fade and I've only got so many hours on a computer and everything. So I need help. And that Indiegogo funding will help me do that. Does that sum it up, Tony? I think so. It does sum it up, yes. <laughs> and um, I feel like I'm uh, I'm doing a, one of the uh, a PBS pledge uh, pledge drive. I'm like, <laughs> oh, everyone who are, who's listening, <laughs> it's like. But yeah, on a serious note, um, definitely check out the Indiegogo campaign. We have some pretty cool things. Not to mention, uh, one of the things we were talking about is how do we make sure that pretty much almost every single penny goes towards the uh, project. We did a lot of the rewards, uh, digital or their live action type things, as in one of the tiers is where uh, Tony White and I will team teach something. Um, and it's basically a walk cycle where I'm showing a lot of my hacks and cheats on walk cycles. And Tony shows the basic principles of how you're supposed to do, truly do a walk cycle. And then that final thing of peanut butter meets chocolate <laughs> or reasons <laughs> kind of thing, we get this, um, okay, here's how you can actually improve on this. Here's how you can actually change these keys. How do we get that beautiful 
combination and I don't know, push the push that whole thing of a walk cycle. I, I've always said whenever I teach this, uh, I think jobs have been won and lost over the ability or inability to do a walk cycle. So yeah, and it's and it's true as as I said earlier, if I look at TV, if I look at even movies, and definitely if I look at video games, I can see whoever animated that has no idea how to do a walk cycle. You know, even commercials. I I see commercials and I just uh, <laughs> if only somebody picked up the phone and asked me, how do I fix this? I'd do it because I hate seeing it. It just it just goes against the grain for me. But yes, and I'm really excited by us team teaching two-tone tutorials, I call it, you know, <laughs> and uh, and I'm really excited by this opportunity because basically uh, the basic idea is me saying, this is what a generic walk looks like. Over to you, Tony. And then Tony will show you how to efficiently and cleverly and in in the software of choice, how do you make that work in, in that digital area? And then we can go back. Once you've got all the keys and everything set up, then I can come back again and say, okay, that's a generic wall. It's very mechanical, no personality, nothing. If it was a sneak, this is what you do. You just change that key and that key and add one there. and Or if it's a double bounce or if it's something else, if it's a military march, how do you do that? Just by changing keys. And that's why I get frustrated when I see big budget productions using rigged characters and they don't get the personality that could be there just by moving a key. So I hope this will be a demonstration. It'd be a great experience for us to work together but I think it will be a really good experience in seeing that just by once you know the, the the foundations, the bottom rules, the foundational rules of doing a walk, it doesn't take much to get more personality and more effort and more other kinds of uh, expression from that same setup just by changing some keys and just changing a little bit of timing and everything. And I think together we can actually make a great presentation. I'm really excited by that one. And uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to that. But uh, you know, it's it's one of many perks that we hope to offer, but it's a good it. one. Yeah. It's a per, it's, um, and this is gonna sound, not that I'm telling you all not to pledge, but it's like, even even, <laughs> even if no one buys that perk, Dude, we're doing the class anyway because I would. I really. Uh, I've always wanted to pick your brain when it comes to that. Go. Here's what I'm doing, and I'm right. waiting for you to go. Eh, yeah, let's add this here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's going to be really cool. I think. So yeah, and and they, uh, that's what you know. Uh, we were talking before that we were recording, and I was saying what popped into my head today was the idea of doing a teaching course for teachers. Yes. That might be something that I could add to the app if I thought there was enough support for that. Um, and we had the funds to do it, but actually teaching teachers, because most teachers don't have time to do really what we're talking about doing in our, our two-tone tutorial. Right. Uh, they don't have time to do that because they're pressured by the curriculum and the time they have and the students and whatever, whatever. But they don't have time to finesse those little keys and know how to do things. So the students don't get to know how to do movement well because the educator doesn't always know themselves. And 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 but they are paid to teach the students that software in that amount of time. So they don't have time to do it. But wouldn't it be cool if they had a resource where they could just say, oh, okay, I could change that generic walk to a sneak just by doing that. And that would be a great course, I think, that I could just teach teachers how to do things. Anyway, it's not on there yet. That's not a proposal. But, you know, there there is a website that lists what I'm trying to do initially. It's going to be many more additions. As it grows, it's going to be more and more additions added to it. But there's a list of courses and events and uh, items that I'm trying to get into the app at this stage if we can get the funding to do it. And it's on the website, which is drawtastic.org. Awesome. So everyone listening to this, whether you're listening to it during the summit or if you're catching this on YouTube later, because it is going to be an ongoing uh, campaign and we're, because the initial amount we were going for, the initial amount, I believe, is 3000 However, to do the full thing, it's actually about, oh, it's it's 
I can't remember the name, the, the maybe about five times that amount total, but we at least want to start somewhere. So it's going to be a constant thing of putting in as much knowledge as we can, as well as uh, even keeping the uh, or paying the company that actually uh, keeps that running every year. Yeah. So yeah. if everyone can actually either pledge or even if you can't pledge, share this with as many people as possible. Um, anyone that you know that's going to be interested in this, hey, and if you know people and any companies or corporations that want to dive in, that would be awesome. So we can actually do that whole thing of showing animation education, the past, present, as well as the future, uh, and really put this thing out there because I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, and because I'm concerned, I think it's really important. Somebody's got to do it in my generation. And, you know, this is not a Tony White ego trip. This is really about 2D animation. It's that, in a way, it's a tribute to Richard Williams, my teacher, and some of the great elders of Disney and Warner Brothers animation I learned from. I owe it to them. To I call it passing the pencil. They passed it to me. I feel I need to pass it on. The, the realistic way of doing it in this modern technical era is through a cell phone app. Anyone around the world can access it. Um, and and we need to, but we do need, as Tony indicated there, we need to make our 3,000 uh, target for this to be an ongoing thing. Uh, because I see this as an organic, it's just going to grow forever. If it can go, it's going to grow and uh, go forever. But we can't keep it on ongoing in the sense of Indiegogo or anything like that, unless we make our 3,000 target. Um, so that's where we're kind of, you know, not feeling an urgency, but really trying to encourage you to support it because we think it, not me, it, it is going to be the foundation with, with this AI tsunami that's going to overwhelm us all eventually. Uh, we've got to dig our heels in and say this is a place where 2D was, is, and can be, even in this changing environment. But somebody's got to do it, and I and I and I really think now's the time. And I think it's absolutely right, better than all my books, to put this whole thing on a phone where you can access it at will anywhere in the world. Excellent. Well, sir, as always, it has been a pleasure. For me too. I want to go ahead and sign off here. And again, just make sure you'll go check out that and I'll pop the link in the description as well as on the screen. So this has been Tony Ross for the 2D Animation Virtual Summit, hanging out with Mr. Tony White. Say bye, Tony. Bye, Tony. <laughs> <laughs>